evening to you. Good evening. Good evening. It's a joy to be here at Fort Lauderdale Baptist Church. Let me go ahead and turn my voice on. Very good. Can you hear me now? All right. Very good. Uh, it's a joy to be here at Fort Lauderdale Baptist Church. And uh, I know this um, pastor mentioned that I was a pastor. And indeed, I, I had the privilege of being a pastor. And I know this. This is a truth that I know very, very well. And it is this. It is absolutely impossible for a pastor to schedule every missionary that calls. And so uh, for that reason, I just want to pause and say thank you. Thank you for this meeting. Thank you uh, for your kindness to the Fennel family. And, uh, you know, I, I, as Pastor said, we'd like to schedule every missionary, take on every missionary. Uh, but we, you know, pastors like to preach sometimes too. And so it means a lot that you would have us in. And uh, thank you so very much uh, for that. Thank you for your warm welcome and your friendly spirit. I sure appreciate that. And thanks, uh, Brother Lee. Where's Brother Lee? Right there. And thank you, Pastor, for help me, helping me with all of the technical stuff. I was not a technical pastor, and I'm not a technical missionary. Uh, some of you know what an IT guy is. I'm a TI guy. That means technologically incompetent. That's me. And so I, uh, I appreciate all of the help with the technical uh, things. We'll go ahead and uh, get right to our presentation here. A picture of our family. And uh, Amy and I are blessed to have five boys. Uh, we just have Cooper with us uh, tonight. Yes, I, some of you chuckled when I said that. Uh, I don't know if that was like, oh, wow, you poor people. I don't know. But uh, I have five boys and no hair, and there is a connection there. I'll tell you that right now. But uh, two of our oldest boys are at Pensacola Christian College. Bill on the far right is a senior. Drew on the far left is a sophomore. And, uh, and then we have Chad and Gabriel and Cooper. And Gabriel and Chad had an opportunity to minister in a youth group tonight. And so they're uh, at another church ministering in that way. And so we have little Cooper with us. He's seven, just turned seven. And we often say that we have a mini Cooper. So that's, uh, that's our family, all right? I grew up in Maine and New Hampshire, was saved at the age of seven. My grandmother led me to the Lord. I met Amy at Pensacola Christian College after we graduated. And and after we were married, we worked for the college for a few years as college representatives, had the privilege of traveling all over the country, and uh, really enjoyed that. And then after working for Pensacola Christian <clears throat> College, the Lord brought us to my wife's home church, Mansfield Baptist Temple in Mansfield, Ohio. And uh, I was hired to be the children's pastor. Some would say the childish pastor. But uh, we, we uh, absolutely enjoyed uh, that ministry and love Mansfield Baptist Temple very, very much. And then something happened that I thought would never, ever, ever happen, and that is I was called to be a senior pastor. I was very content to be on staff as an associate, as an assistant, and the Lord called us to Mount Vernon Baptist Temple in Mount Vernon, Ohio, and we had the wonderful joy and privilege of being the senior pastor there for 15 years. And I want you to know that one of the most difficult things I've ever had to do in ministry is to resign from the Mount Vernon Baptist Temple. Uh, a couple reasons for that. First of all, we were able to see some amazing uh, uh, growth there. God receives all the glory, all the credit for that. And so, um, you know, we just built a new building, and then the Lord moved me on, and so that was a very difficult thing. But the main reason why it was difficult is because we love our church family, as you can imagine. I think every pastor believes that he has the privilege of pastoring the greatest people in all of the world. Amy and I certainly felt... Uh, that love for our people and so to stand behind the pulpit at Mount Vernon Baptist and hear myself say those words that I was resigning uh, church family tonight that was a very difficult thing we often get very emotional about that just thinking about it but it's what God wanted and how did that all come about how did, how did we go from pastor to missionary well it all started with a missions trip and uh, one missions trip turned into six in the 15 years that I was a pastor. And four of the six mission, uh, missions trips that I went on were with a ministry that we now serve with called Worldview Ministries. And when I was on these missions trips with Worldview Ministries, I was made aware of a statistic that absolutely positively broke my heart and just shocked me. And that statistic is that more than half more than half of the languages of the world do not have a Bible. Now, I must confess to you, I was unaware that in our world today, there are 7,099 languages in the world. I didn't know that as a pastor. I must confess to you, I didn't know that. I wasn't aware of that. I knew there was 7.5 billion or so people in the world, but I didn't know there was uh, 7,100 languages in the world. Now, get this. Of the 7,099 languages in the world... 3,876 of them do not have 
one verse of Scripture in their language. And that broke my heart. That burdened my heart. I could not believe, I could not comprehend that in our day of technology, I mean, you can press a button and send an email, a message to the other side of the world in seconds. In our day of technology, in our day of communication, almost 4,000 people groups are still waiting for the Word of God in their language. Um, I want you to pretend, this a quick object lesson, pretend for just a moment that here in the United States, we have no Bible at all, none. Now, many of you have more than one Bible that you've collected sitting on your shelf. You know, you, you have a Bible and it, it gets worn, doesn't it? Because you use it and it, it begins to fall apart. And, uh, and so you can't just get rid of it. So you keep it. You get a new Bible, but you keep your old Bible. And then they begin to stack up, don't they? Well, just pretend that here in the United States we have no Bible at all and a missionary from another country that does not speak our language comes to our country, comes to our state, comes to your neighborhood, knocks on your door, and for the very first time, shows you a Bible, God's Word, and then introduces you to the Lord Jesus Christ. Think about this. At that moment, you have one of two choices. You can either believe everything that that missionary says is true, and praise the Lord, that does happen all over the world as missionaries give the gospel, or here's your second choice. Of course, you could reject it, but your second choice would be to learn their language so that you can do what? Verify what that missionary is saying, that it is true. That would be very difficult for me, especially if it was, say, the Romanian language. Maybe someone here can speak Romanian or read Romanian and you know what that Bible verse is in the Romanian language. Or how about the language of Thailand? Maybe someone can read that, that verse, same Bible verse in the, in the language of Thai, or how about the number one language in the world today, Mandarin Chinese? I think you'll agree with me that when we see that same Bible verse in what is called our heart language, language here in, in, in America, it is, uh, when we see that in our heart language, it means a whole lot more to, for us. It means it can do a lot more for us in our heart and in our life. It's a lot more powerful. And here's the point of this little object lesson. Almost 4,000 people groups in the world today cannot read John 3.16 in their heart language as you're reading it right now in your heart language if English is your heart language. And that is why Worldview Ministries started. Worldview Ministries started to do two things. To train Bible translators so that they can do what? Translate the Word of God into the almost 4,000 people groups still waiting for the Bible in their language. God has blessed our ministry tremendously. In the last uh, nine or ten years, we're a fairly new ministry, but God has given us eight Bible translation projects. We have two in India, two in China, one in Tibet. I'm sorry, two in India, two in Uganda, one in China, one in Tibet, one in Myanmar, and then we just picked up a brand new language in Iran. We have a booklet on the back uh, uh, bench there that has um, all but the Iran project in there. You can read all about these projects and find out a little bit more about them. Um, what you're going to see right now is you're going to see the missionaries that head up these projects, and uh, there's the Olishes right there, and uh, you're going to see um, the, the countries represented, again, except for the Iran project, that's a brand new project. And while that's just scrolling through, I want to just let you know some good news. All of these projects are continuing to go on even now as we speak through faith, meaning that God is using Christians, God is using churches to give monetarily so these projects can continue to go on. I'll give you a couple of illustrations of that. Amy and I, we were in a church in Alabama where after the presentation and after the service, a young couple uh, in their late 20s, I would say, came up to us after the, the service went up to our table, started asking all kinds of questions, and then they were on their way. They, they left. Well, a few minutes later, the pastor came up to us and said, that young couple that was the, the ones that were asking you all those questions, they just handed me a check for $13,000 to fund one of your projects for one full year. That was a tremendous gift. We're still basking in the glory of their generosity. But I want you to hear this story. Contrast that story with this story. The first time that I shared Worldview Ministries with my home church, Mount Vernon Baptist Temple, a little boy by the name of Brennan came up to me after the service and he said, Pastor, here, and he gave me 22 cents for Bible translation. 
Now, I know that you know this, but God can bless both gifts. He can magnify 22 cents just like He can magnify $13,000. But the point is, God's people from the youngest to the oldest are getting excited about the propagation of the Word of God to the unreached people groups of the world. At this time, we'll highlight, um, showcase, if you will, one of our Bible translation projects. And it is uh, Brother Olashe's project in Uganda. I don't know if you've seen this video or not, but uh, this project is unique in that it is finished. The New Testament has been completed, and it's gone to the printing presses, and we're um, scheduling a, um, a dedication ceremony in Uganda for the Runyon Kore people in early January. We're really excited about that. And so we'll go ahead and share that video at this time. As Christians, we are people of the book. The foundation of our faith is the Bible. Our churches are built on the Bible. It is the book God gave us, and without it, we would have nothing with which to build the people of our churches. And yet, there are approximately 4,000 people groups in the world today that are still without the Word of God in their heart language. Getting the scriptures to these people must become our number one priority. The heartbeat of Worldview Ministries is Bible translation, but the ultimate goal of Bible translation is church planting. And how do we plant churches without the Word of God? How do we train believers? How do we disciple people without the Word of God? Translation work is underway in a number of unreached areas around the world. One such project is taking place in the African country of Uganda. Right now in the town of Imbarara, a team of dedicated Ugandan men and women under the direction of Dan Olashe are translating from the original languages into the Runyon Kore language. God has, has really opened a door in Uganda for us to be able to plant churches, raise up Christian leaders, and see a church planting movement begun. And the Bible is the crucial and critical element. The goal is to provide for the Banyan Kore people an accurate formal equivalent translation that will be fundamentally sound and will enable solid churches to be built based on the Word of God. What you have translated was from a full verse from the TR, and we need a first person to check it. In order to ensure accuracy and readability, a detailed process has been developed for checking and rechecking the translation. For the New Testament, each verse has been translated from the Greek using the aid of an analytical lexicon and good Bible software. These tools take each word as it is found in the Greek New Testament and tell its form in the Greek language, enabling translators to use their Greek resources and training to bring the word into their own language. The verse then goes to another translator who will check the Greek information to be sure each detail of the word has been brought into the chosen Runyon Kore word. Carefulness in this step helps to ensure a literal and accurate translation. The next step for the verse is to go to a committee of two translators who will check the wording of each verse and how the verses work together as a paragraph. The paragraphs are then put together into a chapter which next goes to a committee of three translators who will do final checking for accuracy, wording, and punctuation. You, you do a great work. You have to be careful because now it is not just a book. It is not the thoughts of man. You are dealing with the Word of God. If you don't bring across what God intended for the people, you, are, you have the key and you are locking the door instead of opening it. We are very careful about translating the Word of God before we start, we have to first pray for God to give us wisdom and feed us with His Holy Spirit so that He can guide us in doing the right thing. The chapters are then printed and sent to 12 people in the villages who have been chosen from various groups of people, representing a broad spectrum of ages and educational levels. They will proofread or have the passages read to them for readability and understanding. A copy is given also to the supervising missionary to proofread. The comments brought back are compared again to the Greek to balance accuracy with readability. The Runyon Kore translation is then back translated into English by someone outside of the translation committee. 
This back translation is used to check the Greek accuracy with other translators. A verse is not considered finished until no less than 21 people have looked at it through the various stages. By God's grace, at this point, an accurate fundamental translation has been achieved. This process has been going on in the Runyon Kore translation at a rate of over 200 man-hours per week since 2007. Today, the New Testament is finished and is currently going through final checking processes. Recently, an American church generously printed and shipped 250,000 John and Romans booklets, which include the plan of salvation, for use in the Runyon Kore speaking areas. I can preach easily and uh, comfortably other than translating from English to Nyankore with some words which I usually, I don't get the real meaning, but when I am preaching in my language, I get the real meaning. I don't have to feel guilty when I'm giving somebody the Bible because I know that I'm giving them a good translation and that translation will change their life. God is already working through the copies of John and Romans to win many souls to Him and to strengthen believers and churches. As God provides through His people, the Old Testament translation will be underway soon, and with it, the potential for impacting not only the Banyan Kore people, but a large portion of Eastern Africa as well. Uganda is uniquely situated where if we can train Christian leadership, those men and women can go into these other countries around East Africa, Sudan, Congo, uh, Rwanda, Tanzania, and they can minister in those areas uh, in a way that American missionaries can't to reach the people of these six or seven other nations in this area that are hurting for the gospel. Worldview Ministries is committed to translating the Word of God for people who have no scripture in their heart language. Here in the Run and Kore project, we have the personnel in place. They are already working and the project is fully underway. We are asking God to burden the hearts of His people to get involved and support this financially so we can see this through to the very end. Please ask God what part He desires you to have in providing the written Word of God to the unreached people of Uganda. That's, uh, if you look at how we got our Bible in our language, the process that they're using is the same steps of process. And uh, it's just, a, it's a, uh, every time I hear about it, it just thrills my heart. 4,000 languages mm. in the world that don't have a Bible in their language. You know, I've said many times, uh, you know, just, just about every year we get a new edition or new version sure. in our language. And, you know, you ask what the motive is. You know, we've had good translation in our language for hundreds of years. You know, why is it that uh, why is it that the secular companies are translating more Bibles in the English language every year? And it's pretty simple. It's, it's you know it's this. There may be some more sinister motives behind it, but the reality of it is is that's this is what Bible translation is supposed to be, and the place where Bible translation ought to be uh, coming out of is the church. Uh, secular companies should not be handling the Scripture. I love it, the, the, the testimony of the men who are doing the translation and just the weight, the gravity, that they understand if we don't get this right, this is the Word of God that we're handling. And so this is something that we as a church want to be a part of. And you can begin tonight by just giving in, in tonight's offering. The offering this evening is not for Fort Lauderdale Baptist Church. It is uh, for Worldview Ministries, specifically for Brother Fennel and for that ministry. And I certainly wouldn't want him to present the ministry and not give an opportunity to give. And as I said, we will have over the next month, we'll have a few more opportunities for you to be involved as the Lord's laid on your heart. Sometimes once you have a little more knowledge about something, you can be more prayerful and uh, trust God by faith for exactly what he would have us specifically to do. Brother, thank you for coming you, this sir. evening. He's going to preach for us in just uh, in a few minutes. But now we're going to go ahead and take up tonight's offering, and it will be specifically for Worldview Ministries. You came this evening. You plan to give toward Fort Lauderdale Baptist Church. That won't be what this offering's for. You can see Brother Charlie and figure out the complicated way to give to Fort Lauderdale. But it's easy to give tonight to Worldview Ministries, and that's what the offering's for. So, Charlie, why don't you come on, and uh, we'll take up.